Hey guys, I thought we would do some MTG Finance and I'm going to tell you straight up my best speculation for the next two years. This will take two years. I will still be here, so let's check back in two years to see where we are. But Stoneforge Mystic, uh, she has spiked because people were expecting her to be unbanned. And she was not unbanned. In fact, they banned more cards. Now, my personal feeling is if Death Rite Shaman is a problem, if Gitaxin Probe is a problem, print solutions to those problems instead of making cards that people pay for unusable. The same would go with Stoneforge Mystic. Uh, JST Mind Sculptor, in my opinion, has always been stronger than Stoneforge Mystic. These two have gone pretty much hand in hand, and Jace has very little effect in modern. Yes, he's played in decks, but he's not a four of dominating card. Not when you have such aggro decks out there. Stoneforge Mystic, I don't think is powerful. I don't think it's as powerful as Jace. I don't think it's as powerful as Bloodbraid Elf. Yes, it comes down turn two, so much sooner. But you need to get a sword, then you need to attach your sword on. It's not something that I would say is gonna is that fast. And then you need to attach the sword to hit your opponent. There's many more steps than perhaps a Bloodbraid Elf or a JC Mind Sculptor lock. Which they are singly very strong cards, but they're not reliant on other cards. And when you rely on an artifact, you expose yourself to artifact removal. And pick a Stoneforge Mystic is a creature, or the other creature, creature removal. So right now, uh, C has spiked, but should be going down back to that 25 mark. The promo is kind of interesting because... The promos at 20 before people started buying it. Uh, people uh, who listen are to other financial speculators. They have been hosed and they will be hosed forever. This is not something that uh, is going to go away. Every ban and restriction announcement has the opportunity of this card spiking. But one of these days, it will be on ban. One of these days, within the next two years, this card is certainly going to be unbanned. Mainly because we don't have any stronger equipment. It's not like we're printing stronger and stronger equipment. Even if we were doing that, we're fine because Snapcast and Maze get stronger and stronger every time. It sees play in plenty of decks Maverick, Death and Taxes, and Legacy, Miracle Control, like. If a card is strong enough in Legacy, it is strong enough in Modern. And definitely this is one of those times where a very similar Death and Taxes Modern deck could be made should this card be unbanned. A Blade Control deck can be made. A Maverick deck can be made. All of these decks get a lot stronger when this card becomes unbanned. And I think that's what's going to happen within the next two years. You will have time to pick these up, and that's why I like the speculation above all else. I really dislike where people are saying buy this card, and then supposedly within a week it goes up in price. That isn't very attractive to me because then, you know, how many cards can I possibly accumulate in a week? I would rather have a year buy in where I just buy a few here, I go on eBay, okay, a few on sale, okay, I want a few auctions, okay, this one it looks a little bit MP, but I think it's actually like SP, let me buy this for a little discount. The foil GP ones are very common. Very common. And I see them in trade binders all the time. And that, that's one of the things that you look for is I look for volume. And that's something that most MTG finance people really don't discuss because I don't think they actually do this is you need to accumulate a large amount of volume. So you need a time and you need the frequency of the card. If you see the card in a wild, that's a good sign that, hey, there's a bunch of them and maybe it's easier to accumulate. It's always better for me to trade into them, even if I take a trade loss, than for me to buy them with physical money online. Now, 
if I have a one year period, there will be times the eBay auction goes for less than it's supposed to. There'll be times that someone will post a Stoneforce Mystic promo just to get like a good positive review and sell it cheap. There will be time to pick these up in trade binders. And that's the key. A lot of people at MTG Finance get it exactly wrong. They want this card to be unbanned and they want to buy it a few days before the ban and restriction announcement. Then they want their card to go skyrocket and then they're happy. That's not the how you do it. That is absolutely not how you do it. What you do is you find a card that you like that you think and the reason that I like this card is it is very strong and the decks and that it is in Legacy, it slots in perfectly in Modern. And that's a big that's the big deal, modern. They're going to sell this card. This card, once it's unbanned, they're going to put it in some master product or some type of product. And that's how they're going to make money. Maybe a Battle Bond like esque product. They're going to make money from this card. They just don't need to. The reason that it wasn't unbanned right now, there's no reason. It would compete. What, what are they going to put it in? Jace. He was unbanned, then he was put in a set. Well, I guess he was put in a set, and then he was unbanned. So, well, I, I get, I don't know the, the logistics of it. Regardless, this card will be unbanned in the next two years. It will be very valuable at that time. There will be a time to buy in from all those depressed people. And this is the type of card, this is the type of thing, if you're actually serious about putting money behind a card, like Philea, for instance, or um, Malera or something like that, you find you have a good reason that you like the card. And in this case, it's a strong card that's unique that slots into modern decks perfectly. The only problem is it's, un it's banned. So the solution would be to unban it and sell it in a product, like a massive product or something like that. But therefore, you know, what artwork are they going to pick? I think they go with the promo artwork. You want a long period of time where you can pick the card up. You don't want to buy in the spike of a card. You want the card to flatline for a long, long period of time, and then you can accumulate cheap copies at good value. The, the risk is incredibly low if you have a year to buy cheap copies of this. That's what I did with Falia. I had a year to buy her at $2. And then I had another year to buy her at like 225 or 250, like a slight in price increase. But over a couple hundred copies, that slight price increase is actually quite drastic. And there was many times I didn't buy it at that price point because I was like, oh, that's 50 cents more. I, I bought it cheaper the other week. No. This will be a card that I would am extremely interested in. Uh, it's a card that if you can trade for them, once the price drops to $25, $30, even $30 is I'm okay with. And that's above pre-spike. $30 for the regular one, $25 for the foil one, just because there's so many more copies. And foiling is, you don't want to deal, I mean, I don't like to deal with foils anymore. There's just too much damage that naturally happens to them. Anyway, this is the card, this is the spec, and I will, I at this moment in time, I have a zero. As of this recording, I have zero. I'm waiting for the price to go down. I'm definitely going to show you my collection as I accumulate them and how I'm going to do it. I think that's the interesting part is a lot of people have this misconception that you buy 100 of these before the ban and restriction list, and that's the time you buy it at. No. That is absolutely not the time. You do not want to buy a hundred of them because then the whole market is going to react. Oh, these vendors are going to be like, oh, hey, this guy bought, like these are selling out. I should raise my price. You don't want prices to go up. If you actually want love a card, you do not want the prices to go up immediately and you don't want your actions to influence the card's price, which is kind of ironic. But since I have a YouTube channel, however, you know, it's stores, right? Like the, the individual speculator has very little impact on the overall economy of a TCG player. Uh, it is my personal opinion that the major stores, they have more capital and their capital is, they're supposed to use their capital to buy cards to begin with, as opposed to an individual who might have bills, who might have other stuff. 
Anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.